Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, December 22nd, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the best-selling single of all time, in excess of 100 million copies. Christmas. But ignorant college students who don't know anything except political correctness think white Christmas is an offense to people of color. And while AP has declared ISIS to be the top story of 2015, does the public really know anything about who created it? Who continues to fund ISIS? And the nation's drug czar calls the war on drugs. Failed policies and failed practices in the past. Are you saying that the way we have waged the war on drugs for more than 40 years has been all wrong? It has been all wrong. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> all that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And may all your be one. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, the Islamic State conflict has been voted the top news story of 2015. And this is according to the Associated Press's annual poll of U.S. editors and news directors. In second place was the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling that led to the legalization of same-sex marriage in all 50 states. But several of the other stories among the top 10 reflected the impact of the Islamic State and the, the public's growing concern with it. But Obama says, you know, the only reason why people are concerned with the Islamic State is because the media has saturated this story. It's not because terrorists are actually murdering people and threatening to attack the Western way of life. Chakari? Thank you, Leanne. We have a report on the site today. Obama blames terrorism fears on media saturation. This is a article from Steve Watson. And basically, it outlines how after we've seen multiple terror attacks, not just domestically, but around the world, Charlie Hebdo, the most recent Paris attack, also here domestically with the San Bernardino tragedy, many Americans are taking terrorism fears very, very seriously. And Obama brought up these points during an NPR interview. And of course, we've seen the article recently about how Americans are more concerned about being killed by terrorists than they are about the economy or their own personal finances. And he brings up a few good points the, the president does, but the thing he left out, as he always leaves out, is how he continues to fund these radical terror cells. Whether it's airdropping grenades to groups like ISIS, or it's uh, giving training and weapons to groups like Al-Qaeda, uh, blowing up hospitals, blowing up wedding parties, and then the people in those regions who see these things become radicalized out of fear for their own safety. He doesn't want to talk about any of that. He just wants to come out and tell you what you need to do, how you need to give up, give up all your rights, and let him do whatever he wants. Meanwhile, he's going to fund terrorist groups. He's going to fund drug cartels. And then when the buck stops here, he wants you to give up your rights here domestically. We talked about this a little bit earlier today, myself and David Knight, uh, when the president was saying that in the time he has left, he wants to really push through some hard gun control. Of course, that's not going to be to the aforementioned groups that he continues to fund with his uh, very illegal and unconstitutional orders, but he wants to use executive action to rob you of your Second Amendment rights here at home. But things are looking up because we've seen senators like Rand Paul come out and push forth le legislation that's going to give the American people a better chance, and not just the average citizen, but also uh, sheriffs and police officers and federal agents who don't want to go through with any type of unconstitutional Second Amendment prohibiting bills. So things are looking up and we'll have the opportunity to see what happens with that 
the land Rand Paul legislation after the Christmas recess. Back to you, Leanne. That's right. It is not radical Islam. It is a bunch of white guys with guns that are the problem. Just like it's media saturation, it's not the fact that extremists are actually murdering people, threatening jihad against the West. And of course, Obama is clearly not worried because he goes to play golf after every single horrific event. Now, according to a source that spoke to a Norwegian newspaper, hundreds of ISIS jihadists have already slipped into Europe and they're preparing Paris style attacks with hundreds more on the way. Now, this source, whose information has previously been proven accurate, told the newspaper that 300 jihadists were trained to carry out massacres in Europe. 28 of them lost their lives in Syria, but 272 have made it into Europe and have been instructed to lay low. Now, the second wave of jihadists, number 150, with 112 having already received training in the militant camp uh, in Iraq before traveling to ISIS's stronghold in Syria, where they are waiting to cross into Europe as well. The first wave of terrorists have they, uh, according to this source, been completely brainwashed in preparation for martyrdom suicide attacks. Another set has been trained to plan attacks using handguns and suicide belts. Now, we've also pointed out, of course, how numerous jihadists, including some of the terrorists that were involved in the Paris terror attacks, have already exploited the refugee program uh, sneaking into Europe. But you know what? Don't worry. This is not a problem. It's the media is just trying to saturate this story into your minds to frighten everybody. Uh, meanwhile, as we have pointed out numerous times, the media is actually covering up a lot of the stories um, in order to not create any kind of refugee bias, uh, things like that, because they don't want to actually expose the terror organization's plans to exploit this refugee program uh, in order to infiltrate jihadists into Europe. And of course, Obama doesn't want you to be upset about the fact that hundreds of thousands of refugees are also going to be coming to the United States. You know, it's warm out here today, but guess what? It's a lot hotter in Syria right now. Oh, yeah. There's bombs everywhere. You got Donald Trump wanting to blow everything up and close down the borders. It's just craziness. <laughs> Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now today we've come out to South Congress in Austin, Texas, where we have a petition. Now I am gonna be playing liberal where I represent the American citizens for refugee placement. Now the petition says this is a petition to bring unvetted refugees, unvetted refugees into the United States in complete and total defiance of Donald Trump. The United States is a beacon of hope for those in other countries and housing these refugees is quintessentially American. Now on this uh, petition we have right here, it's gonna be a name, an email and a sponsor. Now, a sponsor means whether or not you would be willing to take in an unvetted refugee from Syria. Now, we already have Donald Trump coming out saying that, hey man, we need to close it down. We need to look into this stuff. We need to find out we, we can vet these people. Uh, the FBI says they don't have the ability to vet them all. We don't have the systems in place on the ground to collect the information to vet. That would be the concern. Yes, I think that's the challenge we're all talking about is that <clears throat> We can only query against that which we have collected. It takes about two years for that whole process to be complete. And in that time, there's a possibility that somebody could exploit that refugee crisis and come in and carry out some kind of terrorist attack. So we're gonna see how many Americans out here, how many uh, Austinites think it's a good idea to bring in unvetted refugees. So you know about all the Syrian refugees that are over there, yeah. all the wars going on. Yeah. You got Donald Trump coming out saying, no, these guys are, yeah. you know, leave them over there. A petition. Yeah, so we're trying to get uh, Syrian refugees brought to America so we can house them. It's our American duty. It's cool, man. Yeah. We're, we're, you want to sign it? Yeah, we'll sign and then just put yes or no if you want to take some Syrian refugees yourself and help them out, like that'd, sponsor them. That'd be cool. You'll do it? Yeah! yeah. We're, we're refugees ourselves. We came from Sudan. Oh, and that's with whether or not you let a uh, Syrian refugee live at your house with you. Oh, I don't have any room. Well, they, they usually fit like 10 people in one bedroom apartments over there, so. Okay. So no? No. All right. What about you? Uh, we don't have, we're in San Francisco. There's no room for anybody there, um, but yeah. But you're all about bringing them over though, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on, man? You want to help out some Syrian refugees? I'm good. I'm it's sorry. your American duty, man. Uh, Don't be like Donald Trump. Yeah, so, like, this is in defiance of Donald Trump. We wanted to make oh, a point yeah. of that. He's so obnoxious. Yeah. Oh, you got to tell her. <laughs> yeah, he wants to close down the borders. I know. 
It's not hitting anything oh. so just because every brown person comes over here, they're a terrorist. He's so nauseated. Yeah, it's not, there's not a chance any of these guys are going to be blowing stuff up. They just want a place to go. I know, I feel so bad. What are you guys thinking about for the president coming up? Who do you think is going to oh, take I it? Oh, I Hillary. I pray, pray she does. And this is if whether or not you would allow Syrian refugees to come to your place. Uh, my place. Can't really. Don't really have any extra room. Can't really take any in. Housing these refugees is you know part of being yeah. American. <laughs> you know, if we build a wall and we say no to the refugees, then we might as well tear down the Statue of Liberty. I agree, man. Well, as you can see, we've got a full clipboard here of signatures, people who want to open up the borders and allow these Syrian refugees to come in. Now, remember at the beginning I said, hey, there's a section here for sponsor, and that's to whether or not you would allow the Syrian refugees to come into your home and stay there. Now, out of this entire full uh, clipboard I have, only one, two, three, four people said yes to actually housing them. Now, on top of that, I've got about 27 people who completely ignored me or said, hell no, they didn't want to get into an argument over it because they thought it was stupid to bring in unvetted Syrian refugees. Everybody on here pretty much hated Donald Trump, said he was a bigot, a racist, and pretty much the worst human being in the world. So uh, that's what we're dealing with here in Austin. Um, I think it's a good idea to vet them. I think it's a good idea to close down the borders and find out who it is that's coming into our country before we open up the floodgates and just allow anybody to come in. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Do you think we should open up the borders and let unvetted uh, immigrants come in? Or should we have a better, stricter process of vetting them? Well, Kurt Russell is now doubling down on his theory that gun control isn't going to stop terrorists. We already uh, reported about how he called one journalist completely out of his mind for thinking that it was actually stop terrorism. But now during an interview with the Daily Beast, he was asked about that interview and Russell said, I just didn't get where he was going, saying that gun control was a magic wand of fix fixing the situation with terrorism. That isn't going to stop them from what they want to do. <laughs> gun control is not going to stop criminals from getting their hands on weapons. Just ask the Secret Service. Now, this happened on Monday. A Secret Service agent's gun, his badge, radio, handcuffs, and a flash drive were stolen in broad daylight near the agency's headquarters in Washington. Now, the agent's belongings were taken from his personal vehicle while it was parked on G Place in downtown Washington about 4 p.m. And some others inside the Secret Service, they express surprise that such a crime could take place so close to the law enforcement agency's headquarters in the middle of the afternoon. Oh my goodness, the thief must not have seen all of the signs, you know, that perhaps he shouldn't steal this gun. And I hope, of course, that this thief obeys DC's very strict gun laws and goes and gets a background check and registers his newly acquired firearm. Like we said, gun control is only there to stop law-abiding citizens from getting a gun to be able to protect themselves. Criminals will find a way. Now, GOP presidential hopeful Rand Paul is introducing legislation uh, that's intended to block any effort by the incumbent president to enforce gun control by executive action. Uh, this is named the Separation of Powers Restoration and Second Amendment Protection Act. It would render any action on gun legislation by the president, which circumvents Congress as advisory only in nature. And uh, once an executive action has been classified as advisory only, it would require Congress to pass it in order for it to take effect. Now, in a statement released Monday, Paul said, in the United States, we do not have a king, but we do have a constitution. We also have the Second Amendment, and I will fight tooth and nail to protect it. So there you go. That is the kind of person we need in office. Rand Paul, keep going out there and kicking butt. Now, Ben Carson has weighed in on a controversy that erupted in the Christian community. Uh, this was in a brief conversation with Yahoo News on Monday. Yahoo asked him about this idea that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. And Carson said, let me put it this way. I believe there is only one God, okay? Now, he was asked this question in response to an envelope uh, evangelical Christian school in Illinois uh, announcing that one of its political science professors had been put on paid administrative leave. They wanted to give her